Racing is the stock and trade for one mom and her son. In fact, you can say they have the inside track. Michelle Miller takes us on a Mother's Day visit to Daytona. Driving the number 11 local motors Toyota from Daytona Beach, Florida, Ben Kennedy. Lisa Franz Kennedy knows a lot of drivers at the Daytona International Speedway in Florida. But it would be safe to say that her son Ben is her favorite. Ben's family encouraged him to do whatever he wanted. No surprise, he chose racing. Did it scare you? Sure. Anytime that, that your child's going pretty fast around the track and you're 12 years old, you think, do they really know what they're doing? <laughs> and he did. Today, racing at Daytona is all about going fast and knowing what you're doing. And for Ben and his mom, the Speedway is home. Daytona is my backyard. I grew up here. Uh, my mom had me do different odd jobs here. Uh, like what? Oh, everything. Everything from uh, garbage duty to parking cars. You were on trash patrol? I was on trash patrol. That's what you do when your mom is CEO of the International Speedway Corporation, which runs Daytona and 12 other tracks around the country. Lisa Franz Kennedy is also a top official of NASCAR, the governing body of stock car racing, which is, by the way, headed by her brother, Brian Franz. How proud is he of you and you of him? I mean, is there any sibling rivalry there? We're siblings. <laughs> Hold your breath for the next 30 seconds. It is a family affair. Kennedy's grandfather, Bill Franz Sr., founded NASCAR in 1947 on Daytona Beach. He just had this amazing vision. He said, if we can just put some organization around this, it can really be something. He saw that the unruly sport needed regularly scheduled races and drivers who actually got paid. My grandfather taught me that sometimes you have to go with your gut and sometimes you have to take on a little risk which was balanced by her grandmother's thrift. And B. France kept the early business from bankruptcy by keeping two sets of books. The one that she showed my grandfather basically said we were broke. And he would come down looking for money for a new idea or a new project, and you know, she would dole it out very slowly, very slowly. Kennedy's father, Bill France Jr., took stock car racing international and helped his dad build Daytona Speedway. This is all new? This is all new. This is and now she's rebuilding it. This place is going to be completely different. By January 2016, Daytona Speedway will have more than 100,000 new seats. Oh, what a view. You have an entire view of the whole track. And a row of luxury trackside suites. And you actually had to take into consideration the curvature of the earth? They did. The stretch was so long that the earth actually curves within this, this length. She's spending $400 million on the project, called Daytona Rising, to help attract the thousands of fans lost during the recession years. And she hopes to change NASCAR's white southern male image and bring in more African Americans, Hispanics, and women to stock car racing. Our grandstands need to look like America. And I find that the way people become fans, the quickest, is if they connect with a driver. Woo, right there, baby, right there. And when you look out at the sea of people and you take a look at all the t-shirts, you'll know they're connected with a driver. Talk about being connected to a driver. Kennedy tries to see as many of her son's races as she can. I'm sure she's nervous, especially around the time and after speed late. It's one of the faster racetracks that you get in, where it speeds 200 miles an hour. Then again, she is no stranger to risk. Her husband, Dr. Bruce Kennedy, a surgeon, was also a student pilot. 2007 was the toughest year of my life, and I lost my father the month before that. He'd been sick for a long time. Then a month later, uh, unexpected, my husband died in a plane crash, and he took off. It was a beautiful day and we were going on a trip later that day. I told him not to be late, then he laughed, and uh, it didn't work out that way. 
to work out that way. How, how did you handle putting your life back together? Really, uh, well, Ben was 15, so we focused on school. And then uh, as a mother, <laughs> you can't afford to take time out. Her attention is now on Ben, who's a humble, and because of his family, a very visible competitor. He's doing a great job of racing hard in his first truck race. Now. He made his national debut in 2013, and after 31 races, he's turning heads, but still searching for his first win in a top-level race. This is the great-grandson of the founder of NASCAR. For him to win, you couldn't write a better script. You could not script it any better than that. That would really carry it into the next generation. What about his notion of management? Uh, he really doesn't like to talk about it. Right? He doesn't? Oh, no. He's, Why? Because he's solely focused on racing, and he has told me that he wants to see how far he can take that. He needs to know for himself. On the Friday night before February's Daytona 500, Kennedy kept her eyes on truck number 11. After 20 laps, some drivers slowed down. Yeah. What? What? Oh, Ben's truck hit the wall. Then there was a huge multi-vehicle crash. It's just an accordion-like wreck. Oh, oh, he was in that oh. Oh. oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Uh, mess, there's a dozen trucks torn up. Oh, man. <clears throat> Not good. Ben's truck was too damaged to finish. This headline can't be easy. Well, no, but you cannot predict the future. You just can't. involved in this crash. Yes, and he was fine last night. But you can't predict the future, and I understand that too. Not being naive. For Lisa Franz Kennedy, whenever Ben finishes a race, it's Mother's Day.